James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is December 1st, 2023, noon central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. As we can tell, looking at our KP indexes from around the globe, we have a very strong geomagnetic storm on our hands. We're going to jump right to the estimated planetary index and see that we started the day off with nine hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by a G3 geomagnetic storm, followed by a G2 geomagnetic storm, followed by a G1 geomagnetic storm, and we might have more impacts inbound. Now, a lot of the other KP indexes match up fairly closely, including the College Index. Uh, it has the same G3 geomagnetic storm, followed by two G2 geomagnetic storms, or six hours worth. But prior to the G3, it only has three hours of geomagnetic disturbance. Jumping up to our Boulder KP index, it says we started the day with three hours of geomagnetic disturbance. We've since seen six hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm, followed by a geomagnetic disturbance for three hours. For a total of 12 hours of activity, whereas on our estimated planetary index, they're showing 18 hours of geomagnetic storm activity. Finally, our Fredericksburg, we're not seeing a lot happen there. We saw the day start off with a geomagnetic disturbance, and we have a G2 for three hours and a G1 for three hours, a total of six hours of geomagnetic storms. Both NOAA and NASA cannot determine if everything hit at once, and they think there's a very good chance that Earth could be hit again within the next few hours. Meanwhile, heading over to our GOES X-ray flux, we see we've had another M flare. It's an M1.1 flare. Happened right around 5 UTC time. We'll take a look at where the sunspot was that generated that solar flare and associated coronal mass ejection and see if it's going to be Earth effective. With that said, everyone needs to know that we have a huge crawl hole Earth facing, which means we should see very strong solar winds between about 550 and 800 kilometers per second hitting Earth within about 48 hours. It's a very large curl hole. So the duration of the impact, which will be another solar storm, should last over 24 hours. Again, this is currently Earth-facing. We should see the high-speed solar wind stream arriving within about 40 hours or less to continue the wonderful solar storm we've been having. It's almost like a one, two, three, four, five punch. Let's hope we're not out. Here is our star. The good news about the M1.1 flare is it was generated by AR3502, way over here on the limb. And I think it should be no problem for Earth, although we have several complex sunspots, including 3500 and others coming around the limb, like 3507, that will be a problem for Earth over the next several days. All right, jumping over to Discover, real-time solar wind. What do we see? Plasma went from 1 up to about 28 centimeters cubed. I thought the plasma, at least from the large halo explosion, would be much stronger than that, and so did they. This could be from one of the three initial filament eruptions and solar flares. Uh, we then have a pause and go right back down to below one centimeter cubed and jump right back up 
to 22.5, maybe higher, centimeters cubed. Now, what I don't like is solar winds are moving along with plasma, gapping up with plasma. They've removed some information here for about an hour. Uh, temperature is not responding as much as I would think it would with the plasma moving up and down like it is, as you can see. And again, I expect solar winds inbound here within the next 48 hours. And NOAA and NASA have both indicated that they have no idea if all four coronal mass ejections have passed Earth or made impact, or if we have the large one perhaps still inbound, ready to, well, make impact. These are the events for the last 24 hours i want everyone to remember that the m 9.82 only occurred a little over 48 hours ago so it could very well be inbound the sunspots you see here in orange are very complex that's 3500 and we see 3502 caused the m 1.1 solar flare like i said right before 5 UTC time. Looking at the chances of an X flare today, they're 10%, which is always a very large chance of having an X flare. We definitely don't want one. If you might have noticed on Discover, our shields are still down, which should never be happening with all the plasma hitting them currently. 10% chance of X-class solar flare, 35% chance of M-class solar flare, and, of, well, we've already had a C-class solar flare, so that ship has sailed. We've already had an M-class solar flare, so that ship has sailed as well. Let's hope we don't see an X-class solar flare. Looking at NOAA's KP Index Breakdown Forecast for today, tomorrow, and the following day. We can see that, well, we're right here. Uh, we just had a G2 geomagnetic storm. That's a pretty good call. They have six more hours of geomagnetic storms actually going into the following day. This would be from 7 to 10 tonight central. Nine more hours of geomagnetic storms, followed by a slight lull, and then more geomagnetic storms. So we're going to keep our eyes open and see if we don't have another coronal mass ejection inbound. Heading over to Lasco C3, you can see at 4.30 UTC time that we do have, that is the M flare, believe it or not, right there. And that might have been a part of it. What's really impressive is whatever the heck just occurred here. Now, this doesn't appear to be earth facing but we have to let the soho do its modeling and find out what what just occurred because that is a very strong coronal mass ejection with very heavy plasma i don't see it registered on goes and i don't see a sunspot that it could be contributed to that is directly earth facing jumping to take a look at the back side of our star here looking for a sunspot that could have generated such a powerful blow must have been an x flare i see absolutely nothing on the well earth facing side which is here or the back side which they've made a composite of here there's no sunspot in the southern hemisphere that could have possibly generated what we just saw so we have to keep our, our uh, eyes and ears open and see what happens there and let's all do our best to stay out of the radiation as much as we can today radiation is not good for any living organism god bless each and every one of you guys please share subscribe and always remember anything's possible in bizarro world